Hello and welcome. This video is going to cover the gear you need for Lupin. So what will you need? Well, it's a pretty straightforward list. You'll need a pump, a CGM, iPhone or iPod Touch, Riley Link, a Mac computer with Xcode application, and an Apple developer account. Some of those might sound familiar, but others probably need a little bit more explanation. As a reminder, all of this information is updated and covered in the LoopDocs website. Each of these needed pieces of gear has its own step where all the details and FAQs can be found. So let's start with the fundamental parts first. You'll need a pump, but which pump? Well, there's two, only two kinds of pumps that are compatible with Loop, Omnipod and Medtronic. But which Omnipod, since there's more than one kind of Omnipod on the market? Well, you want the one the old one, the one that works with the big old PDM. Not the Dash system, not the upcoming Horizon system, just the nice old PDM version of pods. But you'll actually be ditching the PDM when you start Loop. The Loop app and Riley Link work together to replace the PDM. So you can put the PDM up on the shelf for safekeeping once you start looping. And which Medtronic pumps work with Loop? Well, the 515, 715, and 522, 722 pumps all work with loop. Just as a side note, the five in front just indicates a smaller reservoir size than the seven series pumps. So a 522 pump, for example, will hold 180 units of insulin, whereas a 722 will hold 300 units of insulin. And some of the 523, 723, and 554, 754 will also work, but those pumps will need to be checked to see if they have the right version of firmware. Medtronic started updating their pumps with a more locked down version of firmware in about 2012. So the pumps made after that date won't work with Loop. Where can you find the model of your pump? Well, it's on the back of your pump. Just look for the numbers after the ref MMT line. For example, this pump on the screen, that's a 522. It's also a North American pump, and we can see that because the letters NA in the pump description near the model number. If it had CA, then it would be a Canadian-Australian pump, and if it had WW, that would be a European or worldwide pump. And what about the firmware that we mentioned for those 23 and 54 pumps? Well, the required firmware will depend on the pump model and its country. For the 23 pumps, those need to be 2.4 firmware or lower. And for the 54 pumps, those were made outside of the USA. So for those, you'll be checking the country as well. A worldwide 54 pump will need 2.6 firmware or lower, but a Canadian or Australian 54 pump can have 2.7 firmware or lower. Where can you find the firmware? Well, it's pretty simple. Put a battery in and as the pump is warming up, the firmware will display in the lower right corner of the pump screen. If your pump is already set up and running and you have a reservoir loaded, you can press the escape button and scroll down to find the firmware as well. A commonly asked question is about other pumps. Are they compatible? Well, generally the answer is no. If the pump you're asking about is not one of the ones that we specifically mentioned in the slides before, then it's not compatible. Not Tandem, no newer Medtronics, no different firmware that wasn't mentioned. Um, it's just not compatible. So along with a compatible pump, you'll also need a compatible CGM. So which ones will work? Well, most all of the Dexcom series will work, including the G4 with Share, G5, and G6. Just install the Dexcom app on your looping iPhone like normal, and Loop will eavesdrop on Dexcom while it talks to the transmitter. So no internet is required. If you're really old school type and you're using the old Medtronic pumps, the old N-Lite sensors will also work. The newer Guardian sensors will not. So what about other CGMs? Will they work? The answer is sort of. Since this is an open source project, some people have made modifications to use Loop with other blood glucose monitors. These modifications are not part of standard Loop, so you'll need to research that if you want, also want to use those same modifications. Those systems are not covered in Loop Docs, but you can search the Loop group in Facebook to find out more info. But please remember to use the search tool first because this has been a well-discussed topic already and there's plenty of old posts on it. 
Now that we have the pump and CGM covered, let's move on to the device that will host your Loop app. You'll need an iPhone or an iPod Touch, but which one? The answer is that many versions of those devices will work. You just need a model that supports the minimum iOS version needed for Loop. Periodically, as Loop gets new features or updates, Loop will require a newer minimum iOS version. And when it does, we'll update Loop Docs to reflect that new minimum. And since videos can get outdated fairly easily, it's really best to check Loop Docs step two to make sure that you have a device capable of the minimum iOS. We keep the list there updated. And whichever you use, it doesn't have to have a cell phone data plan or a Wi-Fi access to Loop. The only part of Loop that requires an internet is if you want to see looping data remotely, like using Night Scout. What about an Android or iPad? Nope, sorry, not compatible. iPads aren't compatible because they don't have the Apple Health app installed, which is used by Loop. And Android devices aren't, compar aren't compatible because Loop is written in Swift code, an Apple-based language for Apple devices. So if you absolutely can't part with your Android phone, you can get a small iPod Touch to loop with. No cell data or Wi-Fi is required, um, so an iPod Touch might be a logical option for people who just can't give up their Android device. What about an Apple Watch? Is that required? Nope, not required. The Apple Watch is totally optional, but a very cool option. You can add carbs and bolus from your wrist using an Apple Watch paired to that looping iPhone. Currently, any Apple Watch will work. If in the future there's a minimum Apple Watch model required, we'll list that in the loop docs. And moving on, the next piece of gear you'll need is a Riley Link. Riley Link is the little electronics device that will send and receive communications between your loop app on the iPhone and the pump on your body. There's two kits available. Depending on the pump you intend to loop with, so go to RileyLink.org and pick the kit that matches your pump. Don't worry, they have the name clearly marked in the kit's description so that you can see exactly which one you're ordering. To build Loop, we will also need a computer with Apple's Mac OS operating system installed. The model of the Apple computer is not important. MacBook, iMac, Mac Mini, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, they all work so long as the computer is capable of running the minimum Mac OS needed to build Loop. You see, as the computers get older, Apple eventually doesn't support further updates to its operating system. The different models will age out at different rates depending on the components that Apple used to build them. LoopDoc's Step 1 page has details on how you can check your computer to see, if your current, to see your current Mac OS, whether it meets the minimum, and if not, whether it can still be updated. If you're looking to buy a used Mac, you can also use that page to see if the model and year of the computer you're looking at buying will be able to use the required Mac OS. And there's inevitably people who are wondering if their PC computer will work to build Loop instead. The answer is maybe. In order to build on a PC, you'd have to make some changes to your PC to make it into what's called a virtual machine or VM. And that's where you install Apple's Mac OS onto a portion of your PC's hard drive. There's instructions on the internet for building a virtual machine. And we've provided a link to a good guide in Loop Docs general FAQs page to help. Once you confirmed you have a compatible computer with a minimum or newer Mac OS, then the next thing you'll need is to download a free application from Apple's App Store. The app is called Xcode. Xcode takes basically all of Loop's raw lines of code and compiles them into the iPhone app and installs it onto your chosen device. But don't worry, you don't need to know how to write code to use Xcode. Probably good to keep in the back of your mind is that Apple periodically releases iOS updates on your iPhone. And when that happens, you'll also probably need to update your Xcode. Xcode won't be able to write to the new iOS unless it gets its update. So it's not a big deal, it's just like updating apps on your phone, but instead you're updating an app on your computer. Typically, Xcode's download is the longest part of the loop building process because the download is pretty large and it can take quite a bit of time depending on your internet speed. So plan ahead. 
And the final piece to the Loop Gear list is membership in the Apple Developer Program. Apple won't just let any old app get installed into its devices. Before an app is allowed to be installed, it needs to be digitally signed by someone Apple knows. Apple uses its developer program to track those signatures. And Apple offers two kinds of membership enrollments. A free enrollment allows your Loop app to function for seven days on the iPhone before it needs to be rebuilt again. A paid enrollment will allow your Loop app to function for a full 365 days on the iPhone before it needs to be rebuilt. So most people use a paid developer account. How much does it cost? The paid account is $99 per year. You can build multiple Loop apps with one developer account. So if you have multiple Loopers in one family, you only need one enrollment. And with that, we've exhausted the list of required gear to loop. Hope that helped introduce you to the basic needs. And as a reminder, you can always use Loop Docs build app section to find up-to-date details for all of these pieces of gear. Have a good one.